Welcome back everybody. It has been seven months since I filmed an update video on the Super Duty. And the reason I haven't filmed anything in seven months is because I haven't accomplished anything in seven months on this airplane. There was a whole bunch of things that I either didn't know how to do or I was just putting off because I really didn't want to do them. It was just gonna be a pain in the butt to do and I was just pushing everything back. After Oshkosh though, I returned home and I was really motivated to get this airplane done and flying. So I've been spending every waking minute since Oshkosh in the hangar getting all of these little tasks accomplished. Now everything from the firewall back is done and ready to fly. As you can see, there's a few things firewall forward yet that have to get finished up, but not that much. It's not gonna take that long to get this done and then uh, we'll be on the home stretch. Now this update video is gonna be long because I wanna go through each task that I did and explain why I didn't wanna do it or why I didn't know how to do it and then how I figured those things out because hopefully that information will help you and it's better than me just walking around saying I did this, I did that. So I'm gonna take my time on this video. I'll probably split it up into a couple different videos because it'll wind up getting too long. So. Let's just get started. Now, one of the last things I worked on in the hangar was this wall. If you guys remember from the earlier videos, this wall was the fourth wall of a paint booth. And my paint booth just consisted of some tarps that I hung from the ceiling, and then this was the other, the fourth wall. And so not only did this wall fill up with overspray, but I used this wall uh, to, to actually point the paint gun to the wall and spray the wall just to test the pattern on the paint gun. So there were paint marks all over this wall. It really looked terrible and it made the whole hangar look bad. So one of the last things I was doing in here was getting this wall painted. Now the wall looks great. The only problem is you can see that I could only reach so far up. I think I got up about 12 or 13 feet and I just didn't have any kind of ladder or scaffolding to reach the top. So eventually, I'll find a way to paint the top. Now back to the airplane. One of the first things I had to do to get this airplane ready to start working on it again was just to clean it up and get all of the dust off of it. I'm amazed that just sitting in a hangar, how dusty and dirty things get. But now it looks great, it's nice and clean, and it's ready to get back to work. Now I do want to take the cowling off of the airplane to finish some, some things up, but while it's on here, we might as well start with some of the issues with the cow. Now the first thing is, it's kind of funny because it's 100% my fault, but I wanna show you all the screw holes that I have on the side here. All right, as you can see, I have quite a few holes drilled in this cowling. And th the funny part is, is I spent a lot of time before I drilled any holes, deciding on how many screws I wanted and where I should put them. And what I decided on was I wanted four screws holding the bottom cowl to the side. And now at this time, the top cowl wasn't on. So I just had the bottom cowl kind of held up there, clamped in place, and I drilled four mounting holes. And then uh, later on, I put on the top, and then I just started up here at the front, I think, and I went back and every evenly spaced the holes going back. But then what I realized was the top screw for the bottom cowling is right here. And the last screw for the top to the bottom cowling was here. So I kind of needed one back here. And then also because the top, there was nothing back here, the top cowl was kind of coming out away from the fuselage just a little bit. But then if I drilled another hole here, it just started to look weird because I have it a hole here and then a hole here. And then the spacing isn't even the same between you know, here and then down to here. Um, and it just started to look weird. And then also on the top, if I put another one, or I put one here, I guess, but this was still kind of coming away. It just, nothing started to look right after a while. So I, I sat back and I reevaluated everything and I decided that I just want three screws on the side. So I'm gonna have this one, this one, and this one. And you'll notice the third one, it goes through the lip of the bottom cowl and the top cowl. So it holds everything in place with one screw. 
And since I have this one here, I obviously didn't want this one right here uh, because then that spacing looked weird. So that made me have to redo all of the ones on the top. So now I have all of these holes in the cow, um, which isn't a big deal at all. These are super easy to fill with uh, resin, uh, but it's just a little bit extra work I created for myself. So, and it's, and it's like that on both sides. The only thing I got right was, uh, because I didn't do it at the time, I just did this actually yesterday, was the, the holes on the top of the cowling. Um, so those are all fine. Anyway, just uh, I guess my point is when you mount your cow, even though I gave it a lot of thought, give yours a lot of thought, and before you drill the holes, make sure they are where you want them to go. All right, now the next issue I have with a cowling is the spinner. When I ordered the Sensnik ground adjustable prop, they asked me what size spinner I wanted. So I put my cow together and I measured the opening. And if you notice, this is a 13 inch spinner. A 13 inch spinner works perfect on there. It, it just fits the cowling really nice. So I told him I want a 13 inch spinner. Well, I got the 13 inch spinner, I got it painted, everything's ready to go. And then what I noticed is between the back plate and the cowling, there is no space. So let me put this down and grab this and I'll show you. All right, now I'm going to put this on here and you will see that it doesn't fit, right? It's rubbing on the bottom of the cowling here and it's pretty much rubbing all the way around up there. Now, at first I thought, okay, no big deal. I will get a spacer, a prop spacer and move this out a half an inch. So I bought a half inch prop spacer and I put it on here. But in order to use a, a spacer, you, these lugs here, you have to get longer lugs. And maybe I can show you when I remove the cowling, but Lycoming does not give you a way to put longer lugs on here. So I couldn't use that prop spacer. So at that point, that was kind of where I gave up on the cow because I just had to figure things out. But what I did figure at the time was I was going to have to cut out the bottom of the cowling here uh, to, to make room for the spinner. So what did I do? I spent $800 and got a new spinner from Sensnik. And you can see the difference between the 13 inch spinner and the 12 inch spinner. Now I just got the 12 inch spinner yesterday and I gotta tell you, I was really pleasantly surprised because check this out. If we look at the back plate, you notice how they're different. On the 13 inch, the flange goes towards the back of the airplane. On the 12 inch, the flange goes towards the front, which is awesome because now I have a flat black or fat, flat back and that will actually give me more room between the spinner and the cow. So look how nice this is, engine side. So now when I put this on here like that, even with this, the gear all the way back, which the gear wouldn't go all the way back with the yellow one. You see how it pushes back? Uh, because the yellow one was, was hitting the spinner, I mean the cowling. But now with this one, I can push it all the way back and look at the room I have here. I have room around the top and it, there's a, it's close, but there's a quarter, about a quarter of an inch of space between the back of the spinner and the bottom of the cowling. So this is, perfect because now I don't have to cut out any of the bottom cow and I don't have to worry about anything up top there. So this 12 inch spinner is definitely the way to go. All right, now the next issue is with fitting the air box from the carburetor inside the cowling. I put a lot of work into this seven months ago. And what I did was I built a bunch of different mock-ups of this air box because I was trying to make it wider and thinner so that I could not cut away the bottom of the cowling and I could fit everything inside the cow. And we're gonna talk more about the airbox on a different video, but this is just kind of giving you a, an idea of what I had to do here. Uh, this is a carbureted engine and the carburetor hangs down a lot lower than the fuel injection unit. It's just a, a bigger unit. Um, so there was, there was just no way to keep the airbox inside the cowling. I had to cut away the bottom of the cowling to fit this air box. And this air box you see on here now, you can just see the bottom of it. It's kind of a Frankenstein mock-up. It's not the final one. I'm just trying to get the, uh, 
the, the angle and everything correct so that the, the filter is in the opening of the cowl. So anyway, there was no way around it. I had to cut out the bottom of the cowling. So now, once I finalize the design of this air box, I will fiberglass over all of this. So it'll, it, the cowling will look nice. It'll have a nice, just kind of little hump on the bottom to hide the air box. So that's what's coming up next. That's really the only thing I have to do on the cowl before I can get the cowl painted. Uh, so I have to, to build this air box next. That's why I need to get the cowling off of here. So all that's coming up on uh, probably the next video. Now, some of the things we'll talk about in the next video when I remove this cowling is the oil pressure and fuel pressure sensors. They were not indicating correctly and I found out that I had one wire wired incorrectly. The oil temperature sensor was a nightmare to get working because it wouldn't ground with the engine. I'll talk about that. Hopefully the info I give you on that will save you guys some headache. And then we'll talk about everything else from the, uh, the firewall back. There's a lot of things that are finished up, including some wiring with the intercom. Uh, the windshield is on and it's all sealed on the top. The uh, doors are done. I did have to remove both doors um, and, and modify them just a little bit. The rear seat is in. I'll show you how I mounted that. All the wiring is done. Everything is done. There's a lot of little issues I had with, with pretty much everything and all that straightened out and I'll talk about that on the next few videos. Oh, and one more thing. There is a very, very secret project, a Manhattan project, let's call it, for this airplane that I've been working on also. If you follow the Kit Play Enthusiast Facebook page, I posted a picture of two 13-inch silver discs that I cut out of aluminum. That is a project, a separate project for this airplane. Nobody guessed correctly what they were for, but I'll be revealing that pretty soon too. I think you guys are going to like it. It's pretty cool.